Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I have this question for us. Is it worth it to call Rust from Python when inserting into a dictionary? The reason I asked this question is because a couple weeks ago, I implemented in Python a pretty complex algorithm to identify multi-word units that was proposed by Stefan Gries at UC Santa Barbara. And it's kind of slow. And so I benchmarked every last little piece of my Python code to find the bottleneck. I found it. And so I started down the journey of figuring out how to call Rust from within Python using this crate. A crate is a Rust, um, kind of like a package or a module, right? It's called pi03. And it provides Rust bindings to the Python interpreter. So you can have Python and Rust talk to each other using this crate. And it was a lot of fun. It's been a fun adventure to figure out how to do this. It reminds me very much like RCPP in the R ecosystem. You can call C++ from R using the RCPP package. This Pi03 reminds me very much of that. You can call Rust from Python. And so I follow the directions to install, um, to pip install um, Maturin and um, create a virtual environment. Pip saw this one uh, package called Maturin. I'll just pronounce it as Maturin, like the city in eastern Venezuela. I spent some time in Venezuela. And um, Maturin in it is kind of like cargo new, create a new project. It creates a TOML file and some other files, including a librs file. And the, lit, the Maturin develop is very much like cargo build to, to compile the um, Rust package. So it's been fun to learn about how to call Rust from within Python. So let's take a look at my script here. This is my lib rs file. And what I have here is um, a function. Sorry, all sorts of, okay. I have this function here that is written in Rust, but it will be called within Python. So the decorator on line five says this is gonna be a Python function. I'm gonna um, call it insert into dictionary Rust, gonna pass in a string, a big massive string with all the words I want it to keep track of. And it's gonna return a hash map, which is like a dictionary. And so on line seven, I created a new hash map, an empty hash map. And on line eight, I um, loop over a split up version of that string, looping over the words. Line nine, I'm inserting into the dictionary. I'm saying, find the entry for word. If it's not there, give me a zero, then add one to it. And I return that hash map out. So that is how you define the function in Rust. This is Rust code, but I have this decorator on line five, five saying this is gonna be a Python function. I'm gonna call it from Python. Line 15 has a decorator to create a Python module. I'm gonna call that module Rust helps py hash map. I'm gonna add my function I just defined above. Here it is, insert into our um, dictionary RS. So not much code here in Rust, that's it. And then uh, you have to do Maturin develop and you have to do release mode to make sure it's quick. And here's my Python code. And it is, you import that new module we just created in Rust into Python like you would any other native Rust module. Import RS helps py hash map on line two there. I create a function in Python to do what I did, what I do in, in Rust there. Same exact idea, empty dictionary, loop over in string, populate dictionary with git method, awesome. And then I read in a big file as an in file that has 230 million words. And I uh, write out and I open up a connection to a CSV file to write out. And so I um, am gonna have it work on thousand word increments, like start with a thousand words, then go to 2000 words, then go to 3000 words, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up until one and a half million words. I'm gonna have it do 10 trials on each of those thousand word steps. I'm gonna have both Python and, and Rust do those. So here's my Python code. And it's just simply calling that Python function I defined above in this same script and keeping track of the time and writing that time out to the CSV file. I'm also having it write out the frequency of the and the frequency of tree just to make sure I'm getting the same results from Python and Rust. Here's my Rust. Here is that module I created that I imported above that I defined over in Rust. And here's the function that I defined, right? Insert into dictionary RS. And again, I'm keeping track of the frequency or the duration write it out to the CSV file, and then uh, just printing out the frequency of the entry just to make sure I'm getting the same exact results. Okay, so let's go. So I'm using, down the bottom part of my screen now, I'm using Python 
see if I can zoom in a tad bit there. Python 3.12.4, and I'm using Rust version 1.79.0, and I'm using Maturin version 1.7.0. Let's give it a little demo. Here we go, fingers crossed there's no, no whammies, no problems here. It'll take a couple seconds to read in those 230 million words into memory, and then it starts going. It is just going. Look at that. It's moving. I'll just stop it now. It's, it's moving pretty quickly. Let's just scroll up here and take a look here. Let's just jump to any one of these. What are we looking at here? We're looking at 84,000 words. When Python and Rust were dealing with 84,000 words, what do we see? We see that Python took, what is that, 10 milliseconds, 10 thousandths of a second to populate its dictionary with 84,000 words. And it took Rust about 4.4 milliseconds to do that same work. And we got the same frequency of the in both Python and Rust, and the same frequency of tree in those two languages as well. Cool, so yeah, it's, it's quicker from 10 milliseconds in Python down to 4.4 in Rust. Again, I'm saying Rust, but it's Python calling Rust behind the scenes, right, under the hood. That's awesome. So let's take a look at the big results right here. This is our old friend R, and I'm using our old friend ggplot2 to plot up a bunch of tests here. So in green, we see Python. The top line there um, is Python, and red is Rust. And we see that Rust is quicker. We have, um, on the y-axis, we have number of seconds, and on the x, we have number of words that it dealt with. And yeah, it's always quicker. Rust has always um, was always quicker in every last um, trial. Now we could limit it down to just 10,000 words or fewer. Just do that. Let's do that for a second for fun. Take a look at our, uh, our plot again. So here I just limited it down to 10,000 words or fewer. Even down there, when both languages were dealing with few words, right, including a thousand words right here. This is only a thousand words that I was dealing with in the bottom left, on the bottom left of this plot. Uh, Rust was still quicker than Python, even though there was some overhead of Python having to ask Rust for help and having to get it back. Even though there's a little bit of overhead there, it's still quicker to have Python do the work of populating the dictionary. So that is pretty cool. Pretty sick, as the kids would say, right? Is it worth it to call Rust from Python when inserted into a dictionary? Yes, it is. It is worth it. Even with few words, even with a thousand words, it was still worth it, even though there is some overhead. So there you have it. It's pretty awesome. Rust has always won out. Every time I put Rust against any other language on this channel slash playlist, Rust has won. It is the bad boy language. It's a systems level language. And um, if you can find a bottleneck in your Python code that you can speed up with some Rust, it's worth it to do it, um, at least with this particular scenario. I will point out there's only two times that they have to communicate. Python hands Rust a big string, and then Rust takes it and does all the work of creating a dictionary, of breaking up the string, creating a dictionary, right? And then it hands back the hash map and gets converted to a dictionary by the PyO3 package. There's only two times that it communicates. In that case, yeah, it's still worth it to have Python call Rust under the hood. Great, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like. See ya.